everyone. Today, yeah, we, we will start our lecture. The first topic is about stretching device and mechanical signaling. So here, we want to reveal what is the major difference between 2D and 3D stretching, and then how they make different cellular alignment difference, and then the underlying mechanism, hypothetically. So based on the certain paper, especially the load of the boundary condition in determining cell alignment in response to stretch. So as you know, our body system, there are many times in many regions they are stretched. When you stretch your arms, when you get up in the early morning, when you do something using, using your hands and foot, every tissue that can be tortured and stretched or sometimes compressed, here we are mainly focused on stretching. So we have, in iTunes, we have a certain device, which is called flexor system, number one, and then another uh, horizontal stretching system, number two. So let's see in detail. So this flexor system, they consist of vacuum system plus, and there's a mold. So when you see here. Cell tension system. The system can control the strain frequency and the axial strain. If desired. So here you can see some uh, radio recent PDMS membrane, elastomer, and on the top you can culture the gel or your cell, and then using this bottom rectangular mold, they when they are vacuumed, the mold is going up, and then this membrane is stretched from the uniaxial side. Uniaxial side means that left and right. Depending on the mold, when they are rectangular, they are stretched left and right. But if this mold is round shape, they, they can stretch up and down, left and right together. So this is biaxial. Bi means one, two side. Uniaxial means one side, okay? So depending on which kind of mold you are insert, inserting, you can determine the, their stretch direction, so which is very important. So anyhow, when you imagine this uh, rectangular mold and the uni and uni axial stretching, this when you imagine when you see the cell on the top of the whole layer, they are stretched left and right. But especially this part, they are more stretched, right? Because so, uh, in this pay, in this uh, company they mention all of the parts, they are similarly stretched, but actually in real situation, they are not, okay? So this is some um, limitation of this machine. But anyhow, we have this machine. Uniaxial strain can be applied to the constructs like with the flex cell tension system. The system can control the strain frequency, amplitude, waveform shape, and duration. So we can change this their video. yeah. So we and then we have to use special this mold which have certain elastomer, and then like that you can this yeah you can see this some um, gel plus cell or cell only. Mm. And the other one is that this is newly we bought it, so this is more I cannot say a realistic stretch. So you can use this PDMS mold, and then. They are directly stretching, okay? So they didn't use any kind of mold, any kind of mold from the bottom. They literally stretch it in left and right side. But this this machine, maybe compared to previous one, you can uniformly stretch the cell or stretch certain things, but you cannot use for uni biaxial stretching, right? So this machine only used for uniaxial one side left and right, not up and down. And then this is, they have limited mold like this kind of side or some bigger side. So we have two machine. So now heavily involved in Hewon and Ji Young and me as well. So anytime if we want to use it, you can try it. So based on this concept, you can think that you can culture the cell on the top of this mold without any hydrogel. This is we can call 2D. Or if you put certain nanofiber or certain biomaterial on top of this mold, and then you can see it on the top, this is also 2D, right? So people are look at 2D, how cell behave change depending on the stretch. 
And in case of 3D, when you encapsulate your cell in the gel and then seed it on the top of this mold, this is called 3D. So long time ago, people look at a 2D, in 2D condition, when cells are stretched, cells are changed, alignment change. And what happened in 3D? Also they are changed, okay? Let's look at how they change from the literature review. So when you think about the 2D, let's say this is the mold or your material, and then from the side view, when you see the cell, they are stretched left and right. Side view means here, but when you see the upper side, they are shown like that. But over time, most of the people they mention in 2D condition, the cell align perpendicularly to stretch, which means when you say left and right stretch, cell align like this. This is Chicago perpendicularly. Okay. So the people say that cell alignment in isotropic line. Isotropic line means when they stretch this line, they feel similarly. And then another term, strain avoidance. Let's say you are cell. You are tortured by the stretch. You want to avoid it. Okay. So let's say this is stretch direction, but cell do not want to feel much of the strain change. So they minimize their cell size along with this direction. But in the meantime, you can change your body shape and then put more body contents in this direction. This is called strain avoidance, okay? Which means cell do not want to be tortured. So they minimize their uh, cellular body component along this side, but they're chained to the other side, okay? If you imagine, let's say this is yourself, you do not want to strain change, you do not want to be tortured, and then you should change your body shape in another direction. So this is called strain avoidance hypothesis, okay? And 2D is literally working, it's good. But what happened to 3D? 3D, also when you see on the side view, when you see the cell like that, but when you see on the top view, do you imagine the cell is aligned like this or aligned like this? Like this means same to the 2D stretch condition or controversially they can align along with the direction. Okay? Most of, most of people say in 3D condition they align in this direction, not perpendicularly but parallelly. Okay? So people think that, oh, why this change happened between 2D and 3D? Okay? And then in that case, this strain avoidance cannot be applied, this concept, right? In case of strain avoidance, this is more strain change, X and Y and this axis, compared to this. And then, according to strain avoidance, the cell should align like this, right? So this is rejected in 3D. So people are asking this question. So based on this uh, common sense, 2D perpendicularly position, in 3D parallel position, okay? Okay, and then, oh, which kind of paper I refer? Uh, in terms of nature communication 2014, yeah, stretch makes perpendicular alignment of fibroblast. Well, initially, they position like that. When you stretch left and right, over time, this second, so six minute, 12 minute, and 15, around one hour and two hour. Within two hours, they are changed. Actually, this, how they face their change of alignment is depending on the frequency and the strain percentage. And most of the people, they use around 10% and one or two time per 10 second. Oh. So depending on the time, their shape is change. Okay, so here, when they accelerate, uh, this is the accelerate some frequency or stretch strain, they are more fast change within like 30 minutes, something like, okay? So this is a very well-known phenomenon. What happened to 3D? 3D, uh, previously they used the collagen gel. So when you look at this paper, tissue engineering 2007, cyclic stretch, so they encapsulate the cell fibroblast in collagen gel and they stretch along with this side. 
as you can see, this fiber blocks align along with the direction parallelly. Okay, this is totally different from the 2D condition. And then this paper interestingly say that. Mm, okay. They mention the micro groove versus flat. So I will show you. So how they people think about? Let's say they, as you can see, this where it is. You can see there is a micro group on the bottom. Okay, on the bottom micro group, and then they see the cell on the top of the micro group, and then they stretch in this direction. But meanwhile, in this time, in this right position, they don't have any micro group, only flat. So we can say from the position, this is flat without any anything. But this already, this substrate is aligned this direction. And then they stretch. What happened? Actually, this, uh, this one, we can easily imagine the cell aligned perpendicularly to this line, line right? So they are more aligned here, but when the substrate is already microgroup pattern, they align like this. Okay, so we can say depending on the substrate direction, the cell alignment is changed. Cause actually this one without stretch also they are aligned following this direction. Okay, only maybe this stretch they can accelerate or a little bit diminish their stretching their alignment behavior, maybe it can, depending on your stretch frequency and strain. But here we can say that depending on the substrate pattern, the alignment can change. Okay? So you have to know this knowledge. Because let's say our, when you think about your arm muscle, arm muscle, they are aligned in this direction. Okay? But we always stretch our arm muscle like this. But alignment is happening all, always along the direction. So when you make some defect, your arm muscle on the very superficially, and then how stem cell can regenerate the uh, muscle? Maybe in 3D condition, because of 3D, they can align along with this stretch direction, or because their uh, secreted ECM during the regeneration, they already make the cell align like this follow. Okay, so you can simply imagine how the even how much which kind of behavior can happen in real situation maybe they are combined so i will show you in detail the hypothesis first strain avoidance okay strain so let's yeah, say read this read this sentence recently proposed an attractive hypothesis to explain this discrepancy they postulate that the dominant cellular response in both situations, which means 2D and 3D, is strain avoidance, in which net disassembly of stress fiber parallel to the applying strain produces cyclical alignment, particular strain. Hypothesis 3D aligned blood because they are complete gel. gel. In other words, cell in gel aligned with apply stretch only because they are avoiding. Yeah, based on this comment, I will make some schematics here. Oh yeah. Okay. So when you I, I first time I show I mentioned that two D strain avoidance is working. And then another another people say that also this can be applied in three D condition. How? Let's say when you stretch this is three D gel, when you see when you encapsulate your cell inside, when you stretch this direction, because they are isotropic or they're their, their soft gel formation, also this gel, they cannot maintain the structure. They also compressed inside of this inside. So while you are straight left and right, this gel, they are compressed up and down. Okay? Because this up and down strain is more, is higher than left and right, this cell can feel strain avoidance to align with left and right direction. This is another explanation in 3D, right? Actually, also it happened. When you encapsulate the collagen, when you encapsulate the cell on collagen and stretch in this direction, always cell are inside, especially in the middle, 
they are compressed like this. Because their compress is more higher, let's say 20%, compared to left and right strain, this cell feels strain avoidance to align with left and right direction. This is another explanation using the previous strain avoidance. So always what other scientists said, okay, is it really true? And then they think about the underlying other mechanism. And then here, they briefly show strain fiber alignment. I will, I will show you later. Not only from the fibroblast, but also epithelial cell, also they can align. In this cell paper, yeah, we already emit this wing strom in our conference. So this epithelial cell, is special characteristic to the epithelial cell is they always maintain their cell-cell interaction. In case of fibroblast, they lonely. They play a single role. Not many of cell-cell contact, very few. And or when they have just point contact. But in case epithelial cell, they contact line. Always like our epithelial cell on the skin. In that case also, in 2D condition, in 2D condition, stretch, they, the epithelial cell align perpendicularly. And 3D parallelly. So we can say that now need fibroblast, which has small cell interaction, but also epithelial cell, which has more cell interaction, they can align perpendicularly in 2D, parallelly in 3D. So when you see this one, this is totally different from the fibroblast, right? All cells are contact. In that case, when you align six hours, this left and right, they are, they are aligned perpendicularly. Okay? On the, they are using flexor system we use and on 2D condition. But here, sorry, here they, they use the in vivo tissue and then they stretch by their, using their manual machine. As you can see, this, this, five, this epithelial cell align along with their direction, parallelly. Okay? So really, 3D and 2D, they are different, and even you can detect in the epithelial cell. Okay? So don't be surprised. Then we can easily generalize maybe endocellular cell, cardiomyocyte, I'm not sure about the control side. Anyhow, they are more generally aligned in 2D, perpendicularly, and 3D parallelly. But maybe something small change, you, you should optimize it in terms of strain percentage or frequency and their waveform. And as a detail of the number one hypothesis, strain avoidance, uh, there is another uh, consideration of stiffness anisotropy. So what is the stiffness anisotropy and straight anis anisotropy? Isotropy means mm, same force, same strain. Anisotropy is uh, uh, inhomogeneous. So one side big, the other side small. Okay, this is the meaning of anisotropy. Ani means uh, some another direction. Iso means equal. Anis unequal, unequal tropy. So as you know, normally the cell try to migrate the high stiffness. This is called durotaxis. This is based on the stiffness anisotropy. When stiffness same, just cell randomly migrate. But when they have certain stiffness direction from soft to stiff, most of the cell, they migrate to the stiff side. This is, this we can call it durotaxis. And then, and in case of strain avoidance, yeah, let's say, normally when you stretch left and right, 10 percentage. Let's say this is not a gel, only PDMS elastomer. And then up and down strain is very little. Even though this, when they are stretched, this central side is a little bit compressed, like 1% or 0.1%, depending on the Poisson ratio. Yeah. Poisson ratio is when you stretch something, the other side of the direction, how much they are formed. This is a Poisson ratio. Normally, elastomer 0.1 or 0.2 which means 10 or 20 percent they change. So, depend, so uh, compared to this horizontal strain change, this strain change is more large, which means cell fill. What is the more stiffness change? Cell fill, this up and down stiffness is higher than left and right, dynamically. Okay? 
Okay, what's the meaning? What's the meaning of the uh, stiffness? How much of force you need to change the strain, right? In left and right direction, let's say cell have 100% power. With 100%, they change 10%. But here, even though they may induce 100%, only 1% change. So from the cell, dynamically, cell feel this direction has more high stiffness compared to left and right. So you have to consider this stiffness and entropy. Yeah, this is another explanation behind the strain avoidance. Okay, theoretically. So here, here we can say that okay, strain, stiffness, they are similarly happening in one direction. So we can say that strain feeling, but stiffness, no feeling. Actually, I say no feeling, but same feeling. We can imagine that. Okay, especially. In case of stiff gel, this kind of strain feeling and the strain feeling in match to the stiffness feeling is con is detected in stiff gel. Okay, but when you think about uh, 3D gel, 3D encapsulation where soft gel totally change here. When you think about 3D where 2D soft gel, here you can say that. Um, on, a on or in a low stiffness. On means 2D in a low stiffness 3D. On the other hand, the traction force applied to the surrounding will lead to much larger strain. Causing compaction or sensing of the constraint that resists this. This meaning is the up and down direction. A constraint in one direction can therefore be sensed as anisotropy or mechanical resistance. Application of cyclic strain in this case causes the cell to sense both anisotropy or mechanical resistance and strain anisotropy. So simply, we can say that when you stretch left and right, as I told before, this is more compressed. Okay? And then, compared to previous one, they feel that this strain change is 20%. And then, they feel less stiffness. When they, when they stretch left and right, 10%, they feel high stiffness. And then, depending, they, that they want to follow the high stiffness, so cell align like this. As I told you before, cell have, a, let's say, imagine cell have the same power, but here, they only change 10%, left and right. But here, they change 20%. So, same power, more strain change means less stiffness. So up and right, left stiffness, left and right, high stiffness, they, they followed high stiffness. Okay? So stiffness, more feeling. So they change their direction to the left and right. So actually this stiffness, anisotropy, strain anisotropy, almost similar concept. But how which part you are focusing? Strain change or when you strain change plus, when you think about the cell power, cell contracted power, you can make two terms together. So this is underlying one thing, strain avoidance plus stiffness and entropy, uh, zero test six. And number two is contact guidance. I briefly showed you before, okay. This is published in 2012, uh, biomaterials. So as I told you, when you have different micro pattern on the substrate, the cell alignment can change, which means that strain avoidance is defeated by the contact guidance. Contact guidance means ECM alignment or ECM density. So as, as I said before, when there are micro pattern on the bottom, the cell always follows the micro pattern, not the stretch force. So Always first priority, ECM alignment, and then strain avoidance. So they prove this concept. Here they are cleverly, first time, without predetermined contact guidance, which means not preconditioning. Just they right after encapsulate the cell on this gel. And then here, you can imagine, this gel is positioned left and right, fixed, up and down, free. Okay, and then static means they stretch 10% and 
and maintain for six days. Okay, this is static, not like on uh, one time, one per second. Okay, not dynamic, static. And then how they form? Center is 90 degrees perpendicular, zero degree and 180 is left and right. Little bit left and right, but the fraction is only 3%. Okay, statically 3%. But, and when you imagine, this is a little bit, uh, how you can imagine? When you statically 10% strain, this is more, up and down is more compressed, right? So based on the strain avoidance, the cell little align perpendicular this direction. So they align like this. Because cell always feel dynamic. Uh, compared to static, so let's say, st compared to static, cell more powerfully the dynamic stretch. So one time you feel some contractive force from left and right direction, but over time the collagen gel are compressed because of contraction. So this can be dynamically changed. So they are aligned, com compared aligned to avoid this strain change like this. Let's say in 3D static and 3D static, this means they stretch by actual left and right, up and down, and then maintain three day, six day, without dynamic. Not much of any like alignment compared to this, okay? So we can say that how this is a, a biaxial force, it is uniaxial force, and the uniaxial force, they free this contact, and there is no predetermined contact guidance. So this is fully understand by our strain avoidance theory, okay? And then, when you go this, um, okay, here, here, okay, here day, 3D static, 3 day, okay, then you can imagine, in a uh, cell and then collagen gel, they are encapsulated together, and then, when you buy extra strain this side, Collagen and cell might be little aligned following this direction and this direction, or randomly, okay? And then they induce this uh, up and down stretch by actually, uh, sorry, this left and right stretch. Cyclic, cycling means one, se one, one time per second, okay? So they pre to the cell three day, and then start to stretch. As you imagine, what happened? Top, top layer, they align perpendicularly to this direction, okay? Mm. And then, it's, it's interestingly, the core, they analyze top, bottom core in 3D condition. Core, no alignment, okay? And bottom, alignment again, okay? So in case of the 3D condition, depending on the G-stack, the height of the cell, where they are located, some are aligned, some are not aligned, okay? Let's say when, when this rock inhibitor, as you know, the mechanical sensing inhibitor, they are treated, all is gone. Up is uh, alignment gone, down is gone, middle, same, okay? And at this interest point, we statically Uniaxial align the collagen, okay, and cell together, and then cyclic aligned. What is meaning of this one? This one is there. Most of cell are cell and then ECM. They are play aligned along with direction. We can give some pattern, the ECM pattern, in 3D condition, and then stretch this condition. They are aligned more. Parallelly, okay. Parallelly, but center, no. Bottom, it will mix it, but parallelly or perpendicularly, they are mixed them. Mm. So we here this paper they they mentioned that depending on the collagen fiber direction, they call it contact guidance. How this preconditioning of the collagen gel, biaxial static, uniaxial static, 
when even though they are induced same stretching phenomenon after that, depending on the preconditioning of the ECM alignment, one is perpendicularly, the other one is follow parallelly. Okay. Yeah, so colliding fiber direction, contact guidance is important. Even they are overwhelming this stretch direction. Mm. So this is the one thing we can imagine. And then the people want to know, okay, up and down, I can understand. Maybe ECM, they, 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 they overwhelm the stretch direction in 3D. And then why the core not aligned? What happened? Because it's all kind of same cell, same gel. So they analyzed again. From the core, uh, they analyze. Uh, yeah, they analyze here. From the core, um, they analyze top to bottom. Uh, sorry, this is um, for analyzing the core, what kind of things have changed? They analyze gel from top to bottom. They realized. Um, Core collagen is more dense compared to upper side. Okay, upper and down maybe they uh, they encase the collagen, but somehow cell is dominant compared to collagen. But in the center, collagen is dominant, which means uh, they don't have any patterning inside. Even though we precondition biaxial or uniaxial, there there is no patterning. So. So they hypothesized that on the core side, on the core, they, for inducing stretch avoidance, they treat MMP1 to degrade the collagen concentration in the core side. And then, little bit you can see they are aligned, start to align. So this is uniaxial, which means random pattern, up and down, and left and right and then induce left and right stretch. And then uh, previously in the core, they don't align like this, right? But when you treat MMP, this core of the center of the collagen, their density is decreasing. So now cell more feeling the external force. So now they are aligned perpendicularly to this stretch. Okay, and the right limit treated gone even when they use low collagen seeding density, they are aligned, right? But high cell density, they didn't affect. So in, in case of the collagen structure is 3D, upper and down side, may, we are not sure they originally deposit up and down more highly dense density, or in center low density, I'm not sure. When they stretch their change or originate their position, but here they mentioned that Anyhow, when ECM is dom so dominant, so full of ECM, the cell has rare detect the external force. Or when they are decreasing their concentration of collagen, they feel the external force in the line. And then as you know, we already know the concept of stress relaxation, right? In case of high collagen density, like 10 milligram per ml, cell cannot move in, inside of cell, inside of gel. But when we turn, turn down the collagen density to the two, or one milligram per ml, they are freely move, okay? Because they have fast stress relaxation. So we can understand this phenomenon from the stress relaxation difference, or stiffness difference in 3D, okay? Anyhow, they have some turn threshold to feel the external force. But from in, in safety, external, ex, same safety, ECM stiffness or stress relaxation, yeah, this strain avoidance, it works, okay? But the ECM alignment, they dominate the stretch direction, okay? And then using this concept, so in Biometer 2012, they showed a very interesting, that yeah, they just applied this concept to their own work. So they want to make some skin substitute. Skin means epithelial cell top, fiber blast button, okay, simply. And then they use this kind of similar flexor system like that, okay. And then they co cover the elastomer on top of the top using collagen one type gel. And then they encapsulate the cell 
inside the collagen. So this is 3D condition. 3D gel on the top. And they position this machine. They induce this frequency of the compress, uh, the frequency of the strain. Because our pressure is going up, this 3D gel, they are stretch, left and right, up and down, uniaxially. Ah, sorry, biaxially. Biaxially. And then the other one concept is they just static stretch, which means 10%, 10%, up and down, left and right, maintain 3D. Here, every one hour, every one second, they stretch it. And then after three days, they culture the keratinocyte. This is epithelial cell. And then they check how this keratinocyte cover on the top of this gel. Here they said, this is more uniform, high concentration. This is less. Sometimes this black, I mean, black part, less density. <coughs> and then they look at the 3D static, 3D dynamic, 3D static, there's no line of affecting, okay? But 3D dynamic condition, cent center. Center means this inside, and the limb means it outside. Center is, they're a little bit uh, perpendicular, they're stretch aligned with direction more, right? But here, 3D dynamic and limb, Outside condition, they align perpendicu perpendicularly. Cause, when you think about this structure, this is some um, pressure using air. So when you think about center area, they are biaxially bi stretch. So in biaxial stretch condition, they are aligned a little bit this direction, not much of perpendicularly. But here, when they stretch it, because this limb is linked to the machine, they are fixed, and then more closely. So this cell, they feel this direction compared to this, this direction. So according to the strain avoidance, they even in street condition, they stretch like that. So we can simply imagine this center is conventionally believed data, right? When they are stretch in bi condition, they are aligned uh, parallelly. But here, somehow, they are, they are a little bit parallelly aligned. But this is a little 2D conventional knowledge. They are aligned perpendicularly to this stretch condition. Okay, So they are mixed, because this machine is not controlled enough to direct the direction of the cell alignment. So they can have this kind of phenomenon. So this is not, we can say this is not very perfect, perfect platform to say this kind of things, but they just use this their own machine or they bought it from the company and then they utilize it, this one. They only focus on static dynamic. Dynamic is much better to make the skin substitute for co-culturing this two cell. How they prove it? Dynamic culturing improves early maturation of human skin substitutes. Substitute. Here, you can see um, KI67 positive cell more detected in dynamic center, dynamic lib, compared to static. Okay. So when you culture the keratin site, when when you culture on the top of the fibroblast, which already fill the dynamic condition they have more proliferation rate of the keratinocyte, okay? And then when you make this kind of uh, skin substitute, this pan keratin and then ekaterin, this is a marker of the skin barrier, top most, um, outermost top layer of the skin, this is very, very formed in dynamic condition compared to static. This all things, and then this is a collagen of the fibroblast. Also, tropoelastin, the maturation marker of the fibroblast, they are highly detected. So we can say this dynamic conditioning is better, regardless of center and limb. This is their finding. 
So they utilize this stretch condition for making their tissue um, combinatory complex. Okay. And then now we come to the second hypothesis. Okay, many people think about this based on strain avoidance consideration of stiffness isotropy and then uh, contact guidance. This is ECM alignment. This is the first hypothesis. And second hypothesis is that stress fiber kinetics. So what is that? You can imagine this black line is stress fiber of the fibroblast, acting fiber itself. And even though this is some line, you can ima imagine this is come from the confocal image, and then they just draw the actin fiber. Over increase in frequency of the stretch, left and right condition, you can imagine the actin fiber, they are aligned perpendicularly, this perpendicularly stretch. Okay? When they increase amplitude from small to large, they are more aligned, okay? Which means when you induce stretch condition, depending on the frequency and amplitude, amplitude means how much far, 10%, 20%, 50%, so perpendicular alignment is change. Absolutely, over time, also change. We can know. And then what happened in 3D condition? In 3D condition, they use this uniaxial condition, and then um, initial condition, and then they simulate this fiber direction. So here, this is left and right fixed up and down free, and then after four hours later, they already form like this. They are compressed in center area, they are narrowed down. So when they induce strain, left and right, this is more strain compared to this. But in 3D condition, as we, as we know before, they follow this strain direction in 3D, okay? And then when they analyze the affecting fib fiber, they also align this direction. And then when they model the stress fiber kinetics, because stress fiber, this is already incorporated in, in the cell. In the modeling, they didn't, uh, they didn't consider any like cell power or cell, cell thing, any automatic things. They only consider stress fiber is a polymer fiber. Even the polymer fiber, fiber is the position inside of this 3D gel, how this polymer fiber is aligned. They are aligned in this direction. So we can say that cell just align because of the their inside of polymer structure. Polymer structure means actin fiber. This is their finding and modeling. They said this is more easily or more generally generalized concept compared to like strain avoidance or other things in, in terms of modeling. So as you know, in terms of modeling, this is more simple. So for enhancing this second stress fiber dynamics, they use this paper. So published in 2017, and 3D, they use 3D, 3D condition and fibroblast encapsulation. So actually, I think that this is the most uh, dominant paper govern every hypothesis up to now, up to date. So when you read this paper, you can know the history of the, this 2D and 3D stretch alignment or other things. So they generalize 2D and 3D condition using one hypothesis, especially the stress fiber dyna dynamics. So they designed this very beautiful platform. They are part, inside, and they position up and down, left and right, so they can singly change up and down or left and right. And then they analyze this center area. So here, this is their precondition. By actual constraint, because this collagen gel always constrained over time. They're contracted. So they fixed up and down, left and right. This is called 
by actual constraint. And then when they stretch, they freely this up and down and then left and right stretch on condition. The other one is they strip it. With freely, they are originally compressed in center, right? Here, they fixed up and down using tape, so they didn't compress up and down while they are stretched this gel, okay? And then this is free to compact, which means maybe mo most of the gel are constrained like this. And then at that time, they freely left and right stretch. And then definitely this is also center area, they are comp compressed a little bit. Okay, this is a little bit complicated, but from this phenomenon, we can understand why is the real feature. Because every single paper, they are using every different condition to stretch in 2D and 3D. But they said this traction boundary, traction boundary means that fix or fix or free. This is very important. They want to say that. So let's try to understand one by one. After by extra constraint here, maybe two or three days, and then they stretch left and right, fully this up and, up and down. This zero hour is right before, I'm uh, sorry, zero hour, hour is the original. And then after tw 24 hours later, this is, uh, after 24 hours later, they start to stretch it, okay? Start to stretch, and then you can see F11 compaction is um, this left and right compaction. They didn't change, okay? Because they are already fixed, fixed and stretched. They didn't change over time. But up and down compaction, this side, one day after, sorry, 24 hours later of st stretch, they are compressed, they are compressed, strain, compacted. And that is compacted is a little bit in increasing tendency between uh, without stretch, with stretch. Okay? And that is alignment, what happened? Alignment, uh, alignment zero means without alignment. One is with alignment. Alignment, alignment they're high and going up. Okay? So when you look at this side, this is at 72 hours later, they analyze their direct direction. When they stretch in this position, regardless of the stretching or non-stretching, okay, they are aligned perpendicularly, okay? So you can imagine this is a 3D gel, and then freely up and down, only left and right, left and right stretch. In that case, like 2D, they are aligned perpendicularly to this straight direction. Hmm. Mm, perpendicularly, zero. Ah, sorry. Yeah, 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 parallelly. They align parallelly. Zero degree is parallelly. They align parallelly like this, okay? So they proved their previous, our concept. So, and then here, they free to compact each other, which means they uh, different from this one. And then they left and right stretch. So here they said, um, over time, this left and right compaction doesn't change that much because they already con contract compacted during this initial pre-culture. Already compacted. So no change at, the, at all that much. And then F22 compaction, because of the stretch, they are a little bit happening. Mm. They are more, less narrow area. And then the alignment, alignment also detected. Okay, so similarly, you can imagine, regardless of their, this, regardless of their constraint or free free constraint, alignment is same parallel to the stretch area. But here, 
they want to say that they want to decouple F1 this compaction and this compaction. Here, let's say, even though um, their alignment, and you look at this one, alignment, they start to align 24 hour. Okay? In this time, F22 compaction doesn't change, which means this F22 doesn't, uh, doesn't involve to make this alignment. Okay? So without this number two, in number one, we can imagine that, oh, no change, change. Also, because of this F22 compaction, up and down compaction, and then because of the strain avoidance, because this direction is more strain change, so perpendicularly, they are aligned to this pattern, okay? We can easily think that, but because of this number two, they didn't change. Up and down, and left and right, up and down doesn't change. But they're aligned, which means regardless of this uh, strain change during this culture, uh, during, the, during the ECM structure, only force can make the alignment. Okay, so they prove their concept. So this is not, uh, not, not from the, this up and down compaction force or compaction change, okay? So this is their importance. The number three is that, okay, here, we when we stretch, we maintain up and down here, and then only, so left and right compaction doesn't change. Also, if we strip this up and down, no change, and then no alignment, okay? No alignment. So, so to understand this one, let's go to this, and let's see this sentence. So we already know that 3D parallel alignment, when you think that so many potential determinants recovery, number one, cell could be aligning parallel to the imposed stretch. So simply, stretch force, they align. Second, restrain or perpendicular to the compaction strain. This is about number two. Because up and down is more constrained, so they are perpendicularly aligned this direction to this. Okay? Number three, since transverse compaction generate collagen alignment parallel to the uniaxial restraint, cell could also be aligning along the local collagen fiber direction. This is predetermining ECM direction. Because, uh, sorry, I, when they do this one, they already using this bi-axial constraint and then they start to align, which means there is no ECM alignment. There will no ECM alignment, but they stretch it, okay? So we can consider three points. One is just literally they align the force. Or second, because up and down gel are more con contracted, compacted, so according to that perpendicular way, they are aligned parallel to stretch. Number two. Three, because of their preconditioned ECM structure, ECM alignment, they can align. So when they compare number, number, number one and two, as I said before, they don't change, but they are aligned. Which is the clear that compression strain y-axis could not be primary driver of cell alignment in this experiment. Okay, it's proved. And then when you, when you compare number one and three, in the absence of a transverse compaction, cells should avoid the imposed 10% cycling strain and orient perpendicularly to the loading direction, but it isn't. Reject strain avoidance. One more time. In the absence of the transverse compaction, cells should, absence means uh, Without, without transverse compaction, transverse compaction cells should avoid the import of temporary cycling strain, which means, okay, in this condition, only this force is induced to the cell, and then without anything. And then, according to the strain avoidance, how they align? They should align this perpendicularly. But how? What is the outcome? No alignment. 
Okay, so strain avoidance theory is rejected. Hmm. So what is their final outcome? The cell sends the outer stretch force, and then they align because of this. What is that? Stress fiber dynamics. Just fiber, acting fiber in cell, they are just feeling the stress of the external force. So because this actin is aligned parallel to the force, so cell are aligned them along with them. Cell is not the major major primary driver. Actin fiber is a major driver. They said. Okay. So uh, so summary like that. This is number one hypothesis. According to the force, they are aligned. For number two, they reject this one. Because of this, they are aligned? No. No change. So they reject it. And then why is that? One and three, only left and right stretch their perform. And then based on the strain avoidance, they should align like this. But no change. So they mentioned that this stretch fiber only key element to determine the, this alignment of the cell. Okay, and then how from the modeling, there are many modeling and mathematics, and how we can know, we can generalize our concept in 2D and 3D. So they, this is left one is experimental data, right one is computational data using modeling, only consideration of the stress fiber, okay? Not any, without any cell or cell driving or, or automatic, only fiber, okay? So we can imagine just polymer fiber in the gel. And then they stretch it. Experimentally, one is parallel, minus one perpendicularly, zero is random. So when you look at the 2D cyclic, okay? 2D cyclic, as we know, they are perpendicularly aligned, okay, right? But over increase of frequency, they are more aligned perpendicularly. It's okay. And then when they model on 2D and stress fiber only, similarly, it's true. And then here, 3D cyclic uniaxial, okay? 3D cyclic uniaxial, freely to up and down, only left and right. And then this, originally, this position, they are parallel, okay? And then, over increase of frequency, little bit they are losing their parallel way. Also, this is confirmed by the computational model. Originally parallel, little bit losing. But when we look at this 3D strip in the up and down, fixed only left and right, we can this is we can use imagine only force drive one, right? Only force drive one, random first, with low frequency, but. If we increase the frequency, they little bit, little bit start to feel the strain avoidance. And then they are aligned perpendicularly. But this frequency, 0.5, this is five, 10 times more, okay? So using this concept, we can say that um, maybe most of people, they using this condition, right? Without fixing the up and down, only stretch left hand. Uh, left and right. So originally they are positioned parallelly. Yeah, because this is uh, parallelly. But when you re re really fix the up and down, only induce a stretch left and right, they are parallelly, uh, uh, they are perpendicularly aligned here. But we can imagine why is the real situation in our body? In our body, maybe this is a more real situation. We feel like. Actually, we, we are not 100% sure, but actually, this one single, single things are reported in individual paper, but they, they from their fiber modeling, they sum summarize and generalize it. Okay? Some people say that, oh, 3D, they are aligned perpendicularly because they are using high frequency. But in low frequency, no alignment. And then sometimes they are parallelly aligned how they combine in one theory using this stress fiber theory, okay? So there are many things to consider. It's a little bit complicated here, but you should understand how cell change their morphology to the 3D condition 
And then they have two theory. Original theory number one is strain avoidance, which is another term is cell alignment in isotropic line. So after consider the stress stiffness isotropy because when strain change, stiffness change from the cell. Even though the substrate doesn't change that much, cell feel that way. Okay. And number two, contact guidance. Always ECM alignment dominate the strain avoidance. This is true. So people understand the stretch induced cell alignment based on strain avoidance. But now, this is a gold, golden hypothesis. Stress fiber kinetics, especially traction boundary consideration. So final statistic theory considers cells of ECM as a fiber matrix how to align over stress. So you can imagine, when you imagine the cell, just when, they, when you think about alignment, you can imagine cell as a polymer, which has many actin fiber. So hypothesis two is now accepted as a golden standard, stress fiber kinetics, with consideration of the contact guidance. Substrate alignment is major, and then stress induced ECM fiber matrix, okay? Okay, any question? So when you want to see in detail, try to look at this uh, number, last paper, this PNS paper, and then from the abstract introduction and result one and two, you can follow a little bit, a little bit. Mm. They describe all of this history in this paper. Okay, thank you.